love playing baseball and little league and things like that. And um, there was a pitcher that would actually go to my aunt's salon. He was a professional pitcher for the Dodgers. And what he would do is he'd actually have a piece of acrylic put on his thumb to help his knuckleball. And so actually when I was about 11 years old, we went in the salon and started putting acrylic on our, on our thumbs so we can throw a knuckleball. And that was how I first got into doing nails. Being a male at that time, not very many men did nails. And so I had to sort of prove I wanted to do a better job. And after doing a really nice job in the salon, I said, you know, maybe I can compete in competitions. The very first competition I competed in was in Riverside, California. I didn't know much about competition. I thought it'd be pretty neat to do. I ended up taking third, but you know, the biggest mistake I made was not going and learning more. And that's why I think at that time I made education a really big part of what I did in the, the nails. One of the proudest competitions that I ever entered was in Dusseldorf, Germany. And it was the European Cup. Um, what was really neat about that is you actually got to go there and you represented each of your countries and you would get up on stage and you'd hold your flag and I was holding the American flag. And I ended up winning first place there and I was the very first American to win that. And that was pretty neat for me and I went on and won it the second year right after that as well. Um, I've always been sort of developing products. Um, for the last uh, 25 years in the in the industry and we had a great product but we didn't know how to sell it so uh, we'd package it and put these little nice little kits and things like that and we actually had to go to beauty schools and sell them so we'd load up our car full of products travel all across the country and go out to beauty school teach them and then sell them products and that's how it all started I was doing some consulting and um, training in Japan. The soak up gels were very time consuming. So we said we need to make this more like a polish change or a nail color application. We really wanted to make sure that uh, we were getting our, the customers in and the customers out in a timely manner. And that's exactly what we did. Um, working there uh, for, uh, for nine months to get the idea down and then go back to the US and then took us two years to create the formulation of Jellish. Every time I go somewhere, you get to learn something a little different. When we were in Japan teaching and they wanted us to teach them nail art. And we were taking these color powders and making 3D nail art on the nails. And when we were here back in the States, I was watching the news and a lady was actually giving an interview on Japanese nail art in 3D. And so I thought that was really funny because Tom and I, we were there teaching it, and then they brought it back here to the States. When I've gone to other countries, and you just see how much passion they have about nails, and you know you're a part of that, and I mean, that's, that's just an awesome feeling. For the last 30 years in, in the industry, uh, developing products, traveling the world and teaching, spent a lot of time away, you know, so I really have to, to thank my my family for supporting me, uh, my wife and uh, my daughter Morgan and my son Garen. Uh, you know, a lot of times I couldn't really be there on certain holidays and things like that because I was teaching. Without their support, it would have been really tough. And so, you know, I'm really uh, thankful that they understand. I'm Danny Hill, CEO and founder of Jellish.